This is the beginning of August and this is the bank of the River Trent and interestingly here it seems as a path but this path doesn't seem to go anywhere as far as I can tell. So the plants have been allowed to grow here freely and it's very very abundant in plant life and I'll just show you what's growing here. First of all we've got agrimony agrimonia species it tends to grow in wasteland or um, on uh, next to the side of rivers and streams it's quite common in nottingham and it's just coming into bloom it's a late bloomer agrimony agrimonia species and this very beautiful plant which is clearly attractive to pollinators here there's a bee on this water mint and it's very common around here it's looking very healthy and next to that we've got my favourite herb, gypsy wort, just coming into bloom now. It's pale, but the flowers are white. It's not very tall here. Maybe it's a bit short of nutrients. This very beautiful plant is common mallow, Malva sylvestris. It's a close relation of the musk mallow. Um, it usually grows tall, but here it's pretty short and hugging the ground. I don't know why that would be, but lots of these plants are looking a bit pale. Um, obviously, they have there's no fertilizer going down here, so these plants will all be a bit short of nutrients, I think. This is um, purple loosestrife in the genus Lithrum, and it's very common around waterways in Britain and um, it's not considered to be a weed, it's just a beautiful wild flower. But in America and other parts of the world it's considered a tenacious and um, noxious weed. But strangely enough it behaves itself in this country and doesn't tend to get out of control at all. This plant here with the tiny leaves is thyme-leaved sandwort and there's quite a bit of that growing here plus a very tiny plant of Canadian fleabane. Uh, you can tell it's Canadian fleabane by the long white rays and the very yellow center to the flowers. Another beautiful pale pink plant growing here among the purple loosestrife is this marsh woundwort. It loves water and bees love it and the, in late summer the whole area is full of pollinators here and you can see how colourful plants go all the way up the bank here um, and attract bees and other insects. I've been lucky to find here this uh, amazing white flowered succulent which grows commonly on these banks because of the stones and I'm very grateful to have found it in flower. There are hardly any but I've been able to spot a few flowers which has been really encouraging after I've been looking them for them for a lot uh, this year. So um, that is I think white stone crop. They could be English stone crop, I'm not sure. And here we've got a plant of marsh figwort just coming into bloom here or just setting seed. There's the flower. It's not very big or attractive, um, but it's a common plant and it's nice to see it here. Not many specimens, I have to say. And here we've got another plant that likes to get its feet wet a bit. This is common fleabane, Pulicaria dysenterica and um, it's not too common along here it's only a couple of beds but it's in full bloom now so it's easy to spot it fleabane of course is renowned to be able to if you burn it the smoke is um, hated by fleas um, so it may be an alternative flea remedy if you don't like treating pets with nasty chemicals as always in these areas you find willow herbs and this is particularly common this is hairy or great willow herb it has large pink flowers and the uh, stigma lobes are in a form of a cross and one of the flowers here has got that very clearly you can see that the stigma lobe in the form of a cross there 
some very nice plants of uh, bristly sow thistle here and it's not a real thistle um, but the leaves are really sharp and bristly when you touch them and uh, you don't really want to get yourself caught on this um, but it's not as bad as the thistles I have to say not quite as uh, painful if you touch it all of these tall lanky looking plants are Sumatra fleabane, Caniza sumatrensis, and there are loads of them along here. If you look up there, you can just see how many there are. And they haven't come into bloom yet, and when they do come into bloom, you wouldn't really know because um, the flowers are quite small and unattractive. Um, but they produce loads of seed, and that's why these plants are so common up here. They're annuals, but they may uh, last for several years in ideal conditions. Here is a much bigger and healthier looking bed of gypsy wort, Lycopus europaeus, which of course is so much renowned for its ability to treat hyperthyroid disease. And people will know if you watch my videos that I swear by this herb and I believe, and I'm convinced it saved me my thyroid. Um, to take this treatment for hyperthyroidism. And you can see these uh, Sumatra flea banes have taken to the walls here as well. And they are coming into flower soon and within a couple of days or weeks they'll all be in flower along here. And here's another, here's another um, water plant that's escaped from the water onto the wall which is a little unusual to see that and here's a hairy willow herb that's escaped onto the wall as well it's moving away from its preferred habitat in water a little strange just finally to finish off the ever delightful um, white dead nettle which flowers over so much of the year here it's not on the bank of the river like some plants it's moved away a little bit so it hasn't really got its feet wet which I don't think it likes so please if you like this video please like and uh, subscribe thanks for watching